Our Cashflow Excel template makes dealing with suppliers and supplier payment terms very easy. So let me demonstrate that by way of an example. At the moment we're on the data sheet where you can easily enter information. So firstly I'm just going to enter some information into December. So I'm going to assume we pay our widget supplier. I've got widget purchases up down the left hand side here. £5,000 in the first month of the cash flow forecast. So what I'm just going to do is pop across the profit and loss account. So you'll see in cost of sales £5,000 and in trade creditors you'll also see £5,000 paid in the month of December. The reason those two are the same is because at the moment we've got a payment term set as zero or cash effectively paid in the same month that it's incurred. However, if we change those payment terms, and we can change them anything from 1 through to 12 months time. So if your suppliers allow you credit terms of anything over and above cash terms, then you can set this here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this to 2 months. So we pay them in 2 months time. Go to the profit loss account. Of course you wouldn't expect that to change, so that's still the cost in that month, i.e. December. We go across to the cash flow forecast. We can see now that the payment of that £5,000 is two months later, in February 2018. Another complication between the profit loss forecast and the cash flow forecast is when you take into account VAT. If your VAT in your country is referred to as sales tax, which is effectively what VAT is, or GST, I'm going to set that at 20%, which is what it is in the UK at the moment, 20% on certain items. You do have a drop-down menu to select different rates and if your rate isn't listed you can go pop across to the info tab and change that. So now if I look at the profit and loss account the £5,000 hasn't changed which you would expect because that's on the profit and loss and that will be net of sales tax or VAT. If I pop across to the cash flow forecast the amount that's been paid out now is showing as £6,000 because it's added the VAT. So not does it only take into account the timing of when you pay that supplier, but it takes account of how much you are paying the supplier, inclusive of value-added tax or sales tax. I'm going to delete the £5,000 and enter an amount in the following line to show you the flexibility of our Cashflow Excel template cash forecaster. So the next line is showing as direct wage costs. So I'm going to put in £4,000 in there. Now, popping across to the profit and loss account, you'll see £4,000 as you'd expect. And in the cash flow, you can see £4,000 under trade creditors in the same way. However, what I can do is I can change that to a payroll split. What that means is, is that it's saying that that cost is associated with wages. And wages, certainly in the UK, is split between the amount paid to the employee, net pay, and the amount paid to the government, PAYE, or payroll taxes. So in order for that function to work, I need to select from this drop-down menu a rate applicable to the payroll tax, or PAYE in this case. So I'm going to select 20%. So what this does is it will take 20% of the £4,000 and allocate it to PAYE, and it will put the balance of it, i.e. the 80%, and show it as net pay, or effectively paid out in that month. So this is pop across to the profit and loss report. That hasn't changed because the cost in that month hasn't changed, i.e. the £4,000. I go to the cash flow forecast. You'll see now that the amount relating to trade creditors or cost of sales is 3200 which is the 80% of the £4,000. And then further down in the cash flow forecast, it's got PAYE payments of £800 in the following month. The £800 paid in the following month is set to the terms. I'll just jump across to the info tab and we've set POYE or your payroll tax to be paid in 30 days. So we can change that if we want to. If I want to change that to paid in 60 days, if pop across the cash flow forecast, you'll see now that it's taken two months to pay that. So what it does is it splits out your payments between what's paid to the employee, i.e. the net pay, and what's paid to the government, i.e. the payroll tax. As a quick aside, this heading here, Trade Creditors, may not necessarily be appropriate to, say, Trade Creditors, where it does include direct wage costs, and that can be changed quite easily under the Info tab as well. 
So I'm just going to pop back to the data sheet and enter the £5,000 back in there for widget purchases. And then I'm going to just run across to the balance sheet, in this case the monthly balance sheet, to show you the entries on there. So firstly, we have in December, trade creditors at the end of December, £6,000. And that relates to the widget purchases. Because if you remember, it's £5,000 plus the VAT was outstanding at the end of December. It's also outstanding at the end of January because we set it to two months forward. And by February, it's paid. So that goes down to zero. Also, the PAYE creditor, because we changed it now to paid in two months' time, at the end of December, that's outstanding. Also outstanding at the end of January, but by February, it's paid. So that goes down to zero. You can also see that we've got a bank overdraft there of 3200 if you remember on the cash flow forecast, we paid the net pay for the direct wages. And you'll see along the bottom here, our closing balance, 3200 at that point in time. And then by the time we pay our widget purchase supplier, the overdraft goes to £10,000. Of course, on your cash flow forecast, you would have income as well. But this is purely to show you the specific payments for suppliers and direct wages.